Look at them, they're not, they're not intimidated by those logs at all. Uh, now, how old is this crowd? Well, these guys are eight to nine weeks old now, and Laura's uh, actually training them. You can see that they're having a lot of fun, but what they're learning to do is to overcome obstacles. You know, we go on these little walks, and, and they're having a blast, but each time uh, they come to an obstacle that maybe they haven't gone across before, you can see that dog right there, um, we, we encourage them to make it. Now, if they can't make it, then we'll help them, but when they do make it, then we praise them on the other side, and they learn something from this experience. They learn that we're, we're not asking them to do anything that's impossible, but also we'll always be there to help them when things get tough, and that really pays off when we're out on the trail. Parks, now, the, the trail runs all through here. Have they actually been out on little walks and things? Oh, absolutely. You know, there's uh, there's trails that go out of both sides of our uh, property here, and what we'll do is go on walks, and we'll incorporate some of the older dogs into those walks, and uh, the puppies naturally want to follow, follow the old guys as well, so when, when the older retired dogs take off, the puppies will chase them uh, through the trees and brush and ravines and water, and when they get way out in front, then we call the older dog back who runs to us, and uh, the puppies run right behind it. By doing that time and again, the puppies learn a couple more things. They learn, uh, one, uh, to listen for my voice, because it always means something, and the second thing is to always follow the lead dog, because that dog brings them home, and they need that when they go in harness for the first time. Well, now, how old are they when you actually make a team out of them? Well, you know, uh, we make a team out of them not based on age, but based on our observation of each pup to see if they're ready to run in harness. So they, of course, have to be big enough, strong enough, fast enough, and most importantly, the instinct to pull has to kick in. And when all that happens, that's when we hitch them up. But we couldn't hitch them up just in a team alone. It'd be like first grade class with no teacher. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to hitch up a team of dogs, just like we would those guys, uh, to show you what running a team like. And the first two dogs that we hitch up eat dogs. They're the most, because they fuck for my commands. Now, all the dogs behind are called team dogs that um, actually that actually provide the power, uh, most of the power here. Now, today I have, we'll have 10 dogs, but there'll be times that run up to 20 dogs at a single time, and that really uh, will put the leaders out next to my black dog, who's out uh, by the end of the, the end of the fence there, or the cabin, over 100 feet in front of me. So you can imagine how much I have to rely and trust in those lead dogs, how much power I have. And so it's the last couple dogs that help me steer a sled. Now, four wheeler, I don't need help steering, but with a sled, you'll be going down a trail. There's trees to go around, corners to make. Well, these guys move from side to side to help negotiate the front of the, the, the corners. Now, as you're probably starting to notice, power is not going to be my problem today. So I've modified this four-wheeler in a few ways. Number one, uh, and you can probably see there's nothing in there. Number two, I've reinforced these brakes. But if I wasn't tied off to this rope that I have on the ground that I'm anchored in, I'd probably be uh, scooting out the gate already. So as soon as we have those leaders ready, I'm going to take off, and I'm going from the other side. All right, I want you to start. Everybody gets quiet. Look at the pull. Everybody pulling wow. together. That's important. We're going to start the watch here. Dave will win his way through the dog yard. You can see all these other maniacs in here saying, hey, pick me. I want to go. I'm faster than that uh, black and white dog. Here he comes now on the far side oh of the Oh, my bus. God. Look at that. And they're going to go over to the far side of the lake. And that is a thing of beauty. Wow. Now, while we wait, let me orient you a little bit. When they break out of the trees, they will be probably pushing 18 miles an hour or so if all goes well. He's running up around a house that he and Susan built that we can't see in the bushes. But keep an eye on the far side. If you cannot see them from where you are, depend on the video. Because uh, Tim and Quinn will have them right up close on the video. And uh, this is something that... There, well, there's the friendly well, here we dog. come out of there the trees come. and into the back stretch, and it looks like our pet oh. dog Freddy is trying to prove how fast he is, but my guess oh, is by the time this run is over, oh, the wow. evil dogs will have passed him because they're working together to, they're working together to get this 600 pound four wheeler with me on it down the trail. And it really, it really requires that teamwork uh, to get, to get where we're going, because some days, 
We might be going over 100 miles with each run. Sometimes we have very heavy load, and so we have to evaluate on their, these oh runs to see God. who's going to make the team, who's going to contribute, and who has the speed. i got to take a sharp left-hand turn, and I'll tell you more on the way back. Ha. All right, now he's not clearing his throat there. He said, ha, ha is left, G is right, like driving mules on the farm. But unlike driving mules, there's no bits in these dogs' teeth, and they have no reins on their back. So it's only his voice and the bond he has with the leaders. Oh my gosh, look at him. Well, here we come out of the trees and into the straightaway, and uh, these guys are really flying. And if this is a good way for me to evaluate whether or not the dogs have been trained like we want them to hold energy and reserve at the beginning of every run so that we can use it at the end of the run to pass teams that might be in front of us or to uh, keep hard charging competitors behind us. Those are the types of uh, qualities that a great team needs. Looks like they have them. I think they'll have a great career in the future and I look forward to racing with them this winter. I'm going to tell you more about them when I get back. Fred's going to take a shortcut. All right, now he will be uh, back around here in just a couple seconds. Now, if the dogs had a vote, they'd want to keep going. But he's going to give them a G command this time. Right turn in the gate. Laura and Mandy are getting ready to welcome him home. We'll probably see Fred first. We'll see what happens. So we'll have the big finish. And this was an excellent run. We're looking uh, at a good time this morning. Best time so far has been about 3.16. And we're under that now, so they're getting stronger and stronger every day. And here they come. Wow, that's whoa, great. Whoa, 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 whoa. Nice. <laughs> David Hay, we're under three minutes. How about 258? Ah, uh, that's incredible. You know what we beat Freddy, Tim? So yeah. this team is fantastic. And what we want to do is make sure that each dog knows how much we appreciate their hard work. And so we go up and down the line petting each dog. And, of course, after work, just like what with us, it's time to play. Everybody in the pool. Oh, yeah. Now, of oh, course, you here. use water in the summer. Oh. I know you guys like to uh, <laughs> go out on the islands and run them, and, and uh, there's work to be done in the summertime. Winter training, what hey, do we Bill, feed them? Just and, kind of you know, what kind of dogs are these? We've so got no, questions. Are we able to fine. talk dogs later? <laughs> Absolutely. Laura over there is going to come down to bring some dogs. You can get up close and pet them uh, if you'd like. They won't be wet, so uh, you'll have a good experience there. I'm coming down, too, so if you've got questions, hopefully we have the answers. Okay, well, listen, this is great, because I, would you bring some nice, tents huh? down? I, I want to tell the folks as we're leaving about this book that you and Susan wrote for young people. I love to read it to our grandchildren. Uh, would you be able to sign books if folks would want a book? Absolutely. You know, uh, it's been really one of the great privileges in, in my life to be able to share this children's book with kids all over the world. And the response has always been the same, how much they identify with a little dog that nobody believed in, that through hard work and dedication. And Susan's faith became the greatest lead dog in Iditarod history. So if any of you would like me to personalize a copy to yourselves, children, grandchildren, uh,